And this way, by eliminating everything, time, space, even God, the concept of God, the real begins to assert itself as the leftover reality prior to any causal assumption. So this is one way to sort of become empty, you could say. Any time a topic comes to mind, any time something maybe bothers you or you become aware of an idea, you just get curious. Hey, let me take this into my contemplation. Go back to my direct experience of being and see if I can find set topic there prior to the assumption of it. Let's look for a moment, sort of as a contemplation slash meditation. <clears throat> Let us go become aware of the assumption that we have, the fact that we have an assumption of the existence of time. In a sense, if you will, you could use the causal model and kind of look inward, backwards into that storage container of ignorance and ideas. And even just realizing that you have an assumption that time exists somewhere, some form, to some degree, you believe in the existence of time. Now, time never did exist. But experience can experience anything. including the assumption of time. And in the depths of direct experience or being, you also have never really experienced time. It is only outwardly through the assumption of time that there then appears to be the experience of time. Well, that experience of time is like a veil pulled over the beingness which knows no time, which is ever present. And that also the notion that things take time, the concept of feeling, the experience, that things take time. And one simple way to dissolve the sense of time more is So simply look into your experience of being and become really honest. And if you can find the experience of time there, you can actually find it. Can you find time? just in the presence of your own experience. Can you find 
something called time. Before you make it up, I mean, before you assume it. This is the most direct way I've found to deconstruct things, is to go to the place of your direct experience prior to assuming the thing you are investigating. So you can take this to any concept. There's different methods to deconstruct a concept that you live with which essentially consists of <clears throat> a causal, a subtle, and a physical level. Not all of them exist physically, maybe, but for the most part, concepts have a causal, subtle, and physical level. So if you find a concept that permeates your life, that maybe bothers you or limits you, a particular illusion that you're able to lock onto, that you're able to identify like, hey, I've been believing in this, I've been assuming this. Um, but also ordinary everyday things we take for granted, such as time and space and color and shape and gravity and depth and those kinds of things that make up your constructed sense of location-based self and so forth. Everything's up for grabs, like you can investigate everything like this and take it prior to assuming it, take it back to its source, before you assumed, before you conceptualized, before you caused that concept to seem to have some structural reality to it. So <clears throat> again, there's several methods to do this, the most direct, but maybe it requires some prior experience. But after a while of doing this, for the most part, you can bring this same consciousness to every topic that comes up for you. And it just kind of goes poof rather quickly, it just kind of disappears from you. And so you can realize yourself in freedom of what used to occupy your consciousness or put sort of a veil over your sense of self. So time is a big one in a sense, because Without time, who are you? There's not much left for the gremlin to chew on. But take any topic and go to the place prior to the assumption of it. So before you assumed it into being. And then ask yourself the question. So here's the direct uh, method for this. And it's very simple. Can I find it? Can I actually find it before I assume it? Can I actually find it? And this way, by eliminating everything, time, space, even God, the concept of God, the real begins to assert itself as the leftover reality prior to any causal assumption. So this is one way to sort of become empty, you could say. Any time a topic comes to mind, any time something maybe bothers you or you become aware of an idea, you just get curious, hey, let me take this into my contemplation, go back to my direct experience, 
of being and see if I can find set topic there prior to the assumption of it. So I'm going to go to direct experience before assuming anything. And then I'm going to see if I can find this topic to actually exist. Can I find it? Can you find time? Can you find something called time in your direct experience? Before assuming it, before visualizing it, before imagining it, before thinking about your past and your future, before assuming it, in direct experience, can you find time? A thing called time. Let's try it with the body. In your direct experience, before imagining it, before focusing on it, before assuming it, if you don't assume that you have a body right now, just don't assume it. In the direct presence that remains, can you find a body? in awareness, in I am. Is there a body prior to the assumption of the body? And the more you do this, the more you realize you're making all this shit up. You're constantly agreeing to a series of assumptions, which produces the sense of reality. That's why we call it an illusion. Now it has relevance, but it is illusory in nature. It is all a concept conceptualized inside of consciousness or intelligence. And it's a great simple way to access peace, the depth of, well, this peace really, because it's quite peaceful and blissful without time, without a body, even just for a moment of meditation, before you reassume its relative existence. Spend some time abiding in a more absolute existence. You see, there's not much that exists prior to the assumption of its existence. <laughs> so then, does it really exist or is it an assumption or a concept? And by doing this, you also become more, I suppose, masterful or able to interact with the causal level, able to deconstruct things that you presently believe, just by seeing if you can find it before you lower your vibration to the level of assumption and automatic, stale, back burner, segregated chunks of consciousness called real things. Before you do that, in the alive presence of being, where is time? Where is space? Where is body? Where is relationships? Where is responsibility? Where is obligation? Where is the world? Where is God? But what, but what remains? In the absence of any assumptions, any active assumptions anyway, you get to know the substratum which is I am, or I exist. Not the words, but the lived experience of it, the being of it. That is that formless sentience that you could say is God, but it only really re reveals itself as your first person experience. When you see that you cannot find God, and that's like, oh, but then what remains? Ah, there you are, God. God is I am. I am that I am. And then that's the jumping off platform to see that you're not even the I am either. 
that there is a quote unquote stateless level of your being prior to the I am compared to whom even the I am is still conceptualized, still an assumption. Before you assume that you are, what are you? Before you assume being, before you assume consciousness, what are you? Before anything ever was, prior to isness. What was there? You know you're catching a whiff of it when there's a sense of liberation, sense of sort of inexplainable groundless freedom that you can't put your finger on, but yet you know it confirms its own reality. As if a breeze coming through the back door, you can't deny the breeze. You can't find it. It's not left. It's not right. It's not here. It's not inside of consciousness. It's not another imagined state. It's not a feeling even. It's a knowing of freedom, liberation, and graspability of unimaginable reality, source. If you persist in this, then things will begin to be experienced as unreal. In a blissful way. <laughs> 